Hello everyone, welcome to another video about Gypsy Jazz Guitar and especially about the Gypsy Jazz picking technique and how it relates to playing fast triplet licks. You know, the other day I got sent a link to a video by Troy Grady called Cracking the Code, or it's a whole series, and it's it's amazing, an amazing series of videos with top-notch quality production, and it's basically a video series in which he delves into the picking technique of some very famous 80s rock players and he talks about his discovery of what he calls pick slanting which would enable you to play very fast lines while alternate picking without getting your pick uh, stuck between the strings which happens a lot and it made me think because in gypsy jazz picking we don't use any of those tricks you know the the, the pick slanting or the alternate picking uh, we, we don't use any of it because we try to sweep as much as possible and we start with downstrokes on every new string. So alternate picking only happens when you play on one string. And in my last video I was saying, or it's not my last video, my last guitar video, I was discussing that really fast Bosse de Radelik and I said um, when you practice the mechanics very slowly, like the the double downstrokes with the half rest stroke followed by the full rest stroke, and um, pick awareness uh, uh, while, while changing positions on the guitar, and awareness between closed position and wide position. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out that video. It's linked under this video. And I said, if you practice that very slowly and you focus on sinking your hands, at one point, this will become an automatic thing. And when you have other fast things that require those skills, it will be very easy. And I want to demonstrate that with this video. And that you can play very fast things with Gypsy Jazz picking if you've mastered a couple of key things. And I think it's less work than if you would have to master the pick slanting and the alternate picking. I think that's more complicated because there's only a few things you have to uh, to become a master of in gypsy picking. And that is, first of all, it's the half rest stroke to the full rest stroke to master the double down stroke. And the thing is, if you've mastered that, it's not something that happens all the time. So if you if you watch Tocholo or Rosberg pick, the way he does it, it happens all the time. But the way I do it, with alternate on one string and then only playing double down strokes if I want to accent a note or when I change strings, then it will happen occasionally. And I've chosen some phrases for you where you can see this very clearly. It only happens occasionally. So if you've mastered that uh, half rest stroke to the full rest stroke for the double downs, uh, you won't need it. You won't need to do it all the time. You only need to do it a couple of times. So that's the first thing you need to master. The, the second thing you need to master is uh, changing between closed and open uh, wide position in the left hand seamlessly, being aware of it. And the third thing you have to master is uh, sinking your picking hand with your left hand, especially when changing positions. Now, if you've mastered those three things, and you can do that by doing the exercises I've given in previous videos. There's two videos, one for absolute beginners and one for more advanced players. They are also linked under this video. And if you then, after that, do the video about the Bosso de Radelik, and you've mastered all those things, which will take you, well, depending on your level, it, will, it can take you a long time. I'm not talking about a week, I'm talking about two years. But if you do it every day, then after six months, you already will uh, make a lot of progress. And after a year, even more, and after two years, you could be a master of it. And that would mean that, that you would have access to all the fast things you hear in Gypsy Jazz. So these licks, these triplet licks, make use of those principles. Double downs, but very rarely, very occasionally. Um, close to wide position in the left hands, and of course, sinking of the hands 
uh, especially during the position changes. So just let me just go over the licks and um, I'll show them to you slowly. And there's tap also on the screen, of course. And I'll play them with the backing track. So the first one goes like this. Slowly, one, two, three, four. All the licks are, by the way, D7 to G minor. So this lick is mostly alternate picking, and um, there's only one double down uh, during the G minor 6 arpeggio down. From the, the D to the B flat, there's this double down. So if you can play the, the G minor 6 arpeggio, you could practice that up and down. Or only down, because you, you'll be mostly playing it down. I don't even feel the D, B flat double down. I've, I've practiced the, the, the half to full rest stroke so much that it almost feels to me like it's a double down, uh, like it's alternate picking. So if, if you can accomplish that feeling, if you don't notice it, then you've mastered the, the, the double down, uh, double downs. Of, uh, by the way, I, when, I'm, when we sweep, I don't call it double, double down, because sweeping this kind of motion, of course, are all down strokes, but they're not double downs in the sense that you need to do a half rest stroke to a full rest stroke. They're just sweeping. And that's something you can master by doing all the exercises as well. So once again, um, this lick with the backing trick. <laughs> It was very comfortable. It's not. It's not difficult at all. The, the difficult thing you will find, let's say you've mastered all the techniques and you can play this, the most difficult thing is not to rush it. So the way to avoid it is to have certain points where you have accents on the beat. So for me, for instance, um, the, the C, the first note of the G minor bar, has a has an accent for me. Kind of anchors me to the beat. And also the B flat on the low E string. Okay, let's go to the uh, next lick. And the next lick starts um, before the bar, so on beat four, and it goes like this one, two, three. One, two, three. So the double downstroke here is um, on the from the A to the E string, where you have three three notes on the A string and then three notes on the E string. Here. And the three note per string pattern with the double downs is something that will happen a lot, or it doesn't happen a lot, you know, in this league it only happens once, but that's a common thing. It's also in the exercises uh, in the videos that I made earlier. And the rest is, I think, it's alternate. There's, I do a slide. You can pick it too if you want. I like the slide. Double down. Let's do it with back and trick. Rushing. Ah, oh, I'm starting on the... I was starting on the one. I have to start on the four. Let's do it again. That's it. 
the, again, the difficult thing is not the picking. It, it, it feels very comfortable. The difficult thing, and this lick is mostly the position change, uh, the change between the closed and the wide position, uh, and not rushing it. So again, you need accents. So for me, the accents are on the one. So you start on the four, one, two, three. This A. And then the B flat on the E string again. So one, two, three. And then the A uh, on the first beat of the G minor. Okay, let's go to the third lick, uh, which is here. And it goes like this, one, two, three, four. By the way, I made all the, in the tap you can see that I made all the double downstrokes, I gave them a red color. So this lick is more difficult, a little bit more, because there's two double downs. Uh, from the C to the B flat. But if you could start with an upstroke and then you would avoid it. But I always start this one with a downstroke. Uh, I usually start licks with a downstroke. But let's say if you start with an upstroke, then you would avoid that one uh, as well. Yeah, why don't I start with an upstroke? There it's another double down. Yeah, let's start with a, with an upstroke and have only one double down. But in practice, I, I probably will start with a downstroke. I'm just used to starting licks with a downstroke. So then we would have two downstrokes. Let's play with a um, backing track. One, two, three, four. Downstroke. Yeah, for me, I don't feel much difference between starting with a down and an up. That's how much I've trained the double down. I don't really even feel it. It feels almost the same to me. Okay, and then you can play the same lick with another ending, and then you end on the six. It's cool. It's uh, that would go like this, one, two, three, four. Let's do it with the backing track. And the thing is, if I start with a downstroke, it sounds more, I'm more anchored to the beat. So probably I will always start this with an up, uh, with a downstroke. Again, it's not difficult if you have the coordination between your hands down and don't rush it. And then I have uh, two starting on the. Uh, by the way, some of these licks uh, ex extend over the bar, so they're still you're still playing diminished. On the G minor, but that's something that's that's normal in Gypsy Jazz. You can you can extend chords and be a little bit late with uh, the one chord or early. But in this case, it's a very nice sound to play. Still playing the the diminished sound on the one chord and resolve late. Uh, so this all these licks also stress the importance of being very fluent with the diminished arpeggio, both both starting on the A string, and it doesn't matter if you start with a downstroke. So then you have to sweep the first one, or if you start with a, uh, if you have two notes on the A string, where you have everything alternate. So you have to be able to uh, be fluent with the, the diminished licks starting from the A string and the E string. But all those uh, exercises, uh, all those licks, diminished arpeggios are in the exercises in the other videos. So these licks. 
um, start on the root of the d7. One starts on beat two, so one, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one. So this pattern here this is very interesting. This is. Are there any double down strokes in this? Yeah, from there. But again, you can start with an upstroke and avoid it. But I like playing starting with a downstroke. Just it anchors me more. You get two accents. Uh, this pattern here is interesting. Uh, let's see, it starts on, uh, on the G string where you have this. Um, yeah, where you have this 2 1 and then 3 2 1 1 on the next string. And again, 3 2 1 1. I think that's a kind of pattern that was first started with uh, the French guys, uh, Adrien, Adrien Moniard, probably, or Birelli. And then Gonzalo took that and made a whole thing of it. And it sounds like very sophisticated chromatics. And actually, those are very sophisticated chromatic notes, but it's just a fingering trick where you just play 3, 2, 1, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1. You could play that, you could start with that on the GG string. It almost fits anywhere, but it usually is played in a dominant type licks like this. So that it uses a bit of that in this lick. One, two, three, four, one. Let's try it in the backing track. One. Sorry, again. One, two, three, four. Mm. Yeah, this lick is super easy. If you if you've practiced your diminished arpeggios, this lick is super easy. There's no double down. If you start with an upstroke, there is no double down at all. And then the last lick um, has the same beginning, although now it starts on the one, and it has a different ending, and it's a little longer. It's, it's, it goes like this: one, two, three, four. <laughs> Let's start it with the backing track. Super easy. Well, yeah, of course, not in the beginning when you do this, but when you've mastered all those techniques, it's super easy to do this. And uh, this lick, the most difficult thing is not to rush it again. So for this one, you have to keep in mind that the one, there's a, a F sharp on the one at one point. There, so you have to make sure that that note is on the, on the one. One, two, three, four. And then the C again. Uh, the, 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 the F sharp and then the C is on the, on the beat again. In the previous lick, the one is the E flat, so it's the same notes, but you have to make sure that you hit the E flat, that you have an accent on the E flat, like this. Three, four, one. Three, four, one. And in the other, in the second one, it's the F sharp. Three, four. Three, four. Let's play both licks with the backing track. Uh. You 
see, I got, it's no problem to play these things. Of course, I've designed all these licks very carefully, sitting down, figuring out you know, where to start it, and then uh, you know, put in chromatics to, to keep my hand alternate, stuff, stuff like that, you know? So it's not like you could improvise these triplets on the, on the spot. I, I couldn't do that. And I think most people that play these kind of triplet licks, they thought about it, you know, and they try to come up with stuff that fits the gypsy jazz uh, way of picking. And just to show you that that gypsy jazz picking technique is very powerful. You get a powerful sound. It works on every guitar. I can do this on a arch top. I can do this on a gypsy jazz guitar. I can do this on a a, a strat or a, a, a a flat top guitar like for bluegrass, it doesn't really matter. It's always the same. Of course, you have to adapt a little bit. If, uh, when I play on an arch top, I have to pick a little bit lighter. And when I play on a gypsy guitar, I can pick a little bit with a little bit more power, but, but not much. There's not much difference, just a little difference. And you can get used to that in a couple of days. So that's the power of gypsy jazz picking technique. It works on every guitar. And you can say that for many of the other styles. So the one the one thing that's not possible with gypsy jazz picking is down sweeps. Stuff like... Uh, for that you have to really um, actually do the pick slanting thing and sweep. And I'm not good at it. I can do it with this lick because you can kind of play those notes very fast. But if I have to do it in time with eighth notes or triplets, I wouldn't be able to do it. I would have to practice, but it uh, probably would take me another two years to get that down. So I try to avoid those kind of uh, phrases. Okay, I hope you can get to grips with the technique and use these licks in your solos. And I see you guys next time. Bye.